software. What's up? Can you guys hear me? Let me turn up the sound. I am here with the man, the Jew, the Jaime legend. What up, guys? Wait for it. Wait for the camera. And we're here with Mark I just had to do it. But Mark Crook is here. It's not his birthday yet. Stop wishing him a birthday. What time were you born tomorrow? Do you know your time of birth? Two o'clock in the afternoon? Yeah. Eastern? Or like Israel yeah, time? South African time. South African. Yeah. So it might be your birthday right now. You don't even know. Uh, yeah, it's too much math. Wait, 2 p.m.? You're born 2 p.m. tomorrow. Eight hours. It's his birthday tomorrow, but he was born in South Africa time, so I don't understand how this works. Wait, let's see what time it is right now. Hold up. Seven hours. South Africa time. We're not good at math. So right now, it's 11 p.m. on the 29th in South Africa. So it's, it's six hours ahead of East Coast time. So you were born at roughly... Oh, yeah, minus... I was at it. Yeah, so you were born at roughly like 8 a.m. Yeah. Are we right at 2 p.m.? Uh, you don't know your exact I time of birth? Exact time. I was born at 9.26 a.m. Eastern, just in time for the stock market open. <laughs> April 15, 1981. I don't know what the market did that day. But you were born, so tomorrow morning at 8 in the morning is your birthday. That's pretty sweet. Anyways, we are here. Um, celebrating an, an early birthday, we're literally the exact same age, like 15 days apart. I think you're beating me now this year in year-to-date profits. I'm up like 84,000. You're at like 88,000. We're, we're, the, we're the two Jew crew here, and it's really kind of weird. Mark does look a lot younger. He eats organic. Do you eat all healthy? Yes, we're the same age, but Mark is a lot more mature. Everyone's surprised by, by how we're the same age. Mark is so much more mature. <laughs> Smile and Shine's uh, husband just turned 33 yesterday. Happy birthday to him. Uh, JM Trader just got out of high school when I was born. Cool. Well, welcome, everybody. We are going to do uh, a little Q&A, and some of you guys are brand new, so I just want to go over you know who mark is in case you guys don't know because frankly this is this is the guy that you should look up to this is the guy who you should be let's zoom in on him hold up let's get into his face so you can see this is mark crook and he has made roughly 700 730,000 now is that right 730,000 a little less i had a couple uh, 730,000 in profits. How long has it been? Five or six years? Or seven years? Six years. Six years. So a little over 100,000. We are actually in Texas to celebrate his birthday. You can probably see us uh, on TV tonight. The Spurs versus the Warriors. We're going to be there uh, with a very special, legendary player whose nickname is the Admiral. Do they usually put the Admiral on TV? I feel like yeah, they do. Yeah, sure. So we're going to be on TV with the Admiral. So check out the Spurs um, and uh, the Warriors. And uh, it should be pretty cool. Yeah, I'm all over the place. I don't even know what time zone this is. Um, but it's, it's pretty cool. And, uh, you know, Mark has just been an amazing student and, and now an amazing teacher, as many of you guys know. How many video lessons have you done now for challenge students? Uh, three. 300 video lessons from this guy, all on his experience and stuff like that. Um, pretty sweet. And more important than just the videos, you know, he's mentoring you guys. You guys have access as challenge students to basically his mind. He's opened up his mind to challenge students. And, you know, you want to learn from somebody who's been doing this for several years. There's a lot of newbies 
who have been, you know, trading for one, two, three, four years, and they don't know everything. And, you know, Mark doesn't know everything, but at least he knows more. He's been experienced. He's been around. He's had losses. And it's good to learn from people who have, you know, seen everything. Perhaps most importantly, he has watched all of my video lessons three to four times. And I wish that more of you guys were that dedicated. I don't know why you aren't. I know there's a lot of video lessons, but they're good for you. So, ooh, this guy says, go Rockets. Ooh, that's, that's rough. We have Rockets fans. Rockets lost to the Golden State Warriors last night. The Rockets lost to the Warriors last night? And now the Spurs are going to crush the Warriors tonight? I think the Spurs are going to send them back. Harden is MVP, says Jack Aru. No. <laughs> no. No. You're wrong. That would be Kawhi Leonard. All right. Quick, quick question. Um, from and, and this is a Q&A webinar. You know, you have access to all of Mark's video lessons, and he does webinars, and he does tr trade alerts, and awesome stuff. Um, but this is a Q&A webinar, so throw out questions. We want to examine how, you know, he left his cubicle job to make 700000 on his way to making millions. But most importantly, rather than just worrying about 700000 or a million, he has the life that, you know, frankly, he's wanted and he's deserved. So he doesn't have to work in a cubicle. Did you have a boss that you used to hate? Yeah. Just to make the vision complete. You had a boss that you used to hate? Yeah, absolutely. What was his name? Michael. Michael? Michael was a dick? Yeah, he was, he was an accountant. He was a dick. So Mark used to be an accountant and he worked in a cubicle with this dick named Michael, and now he's free, living in Miami. Um, question is, how much did you get started with, and how did you get started? I started with roughly 50K. 50,000 he started with. So, not, you know, nothing small, but certainly... Uh, that is small. I knew, you know, I knew that, that I had the flexibility and the I had no real obligations, no debt, thank God, and, and I was in a good place, and I knew that, you know, finding Tim Sykes on the internet was one of the greatest blessings that I, you know, would, would eventually realize, so, um, you know, I always wanted to, to, to get into the stock market, and I didn't have a damn clue what, what to do, and you know, pretty much everything I know and everything that I practice in the markets is really stems from Tim's, uh, you know, foundation, you know, his, his, his courses and uh, video lessons. So I think the key is to really read up uh, and, and study up on, on the core foundation of, of what he teaches before getting started. And that's exactly what I did. And, and I had losses starting out the same way Bhutan did. Bhutan, were you ever under the PDT rule, or were you over always over the PDT I, actually, rule? I had a I started a uh, an E Trade account because I was trading at CenterPoint for a while. Uh, I also had an E Trade account, and that E Trade account I decided that, that would be a little bit more of a uh, you know less aggressive account, and I started that account with twenty thousand. And that account now is roughly... Hold up, Hold up. we got to put it closer to you. Oh. Oh, look at this little, this little table. <laughs> there we go. Now we're all professional. So, so, so I was under the PDT rule in one of my accounts, believe it or not. And I think that that actually helps. You'll hear Tim talk about that all the time, that the PDT rule is actually a benefit uh, that you might not actually appreciate because you choose your trades very wisely. And, uh, and when you start small and you grow it gradually and gradually and gradually, you appreciate the journey. Um, and I think that's really what's led to my consistency. And, and uh, you know, that account is up over 10 times, well over 10 times, 12 times. Um, so definitely appreciate the PDT rule uh, as frustrating as it might be. How much did you lose in the beginning and how long did it take you to 
you know, Tim Grittani often says it took him nine months to get consistently profitable. What would you say was your... Yeah, I was looking back at my chart. It took me a good year, roughly a year. So So that's what you guys, you know, have to expect. And I know it's frustrating. I know you want profits in week one, month one, month two. But you need to get used to the volatility. You have to learn how to take the meat of the move. Even to this day when Mark makes like, you know, 8000 in a day and we, we chat and he's like, I could have made 15000 And you have to get used to, you know, dis- if that's disappointment. But how many of you would like to make $8,000 in a day? Yes or no? Let's see you guys leave some comments. Just so you understand a little bit more. It helps like when we see your comments too. Um, look at this. Every single person would like to make... 8,000, except Joe Kelly, who's a dick, and he's trying to be sarcastic. Ducks said no. That's not Ducks. Oh, That's Duck C. Is Ducks Duck C? Did he change his username? For the the rest of you guys, $8,000 in a day is damn good. I mean, I wasn't making 8000 in a month to, as an accountant, so... And you hated it. Put it all in perspective. But you also hated it, too. Like, this yeah, is yeah. enjoyable. Like, you can take a day off, like... There's no days off as an accountant, especially in March, February, March, April. Yeah. I mean, I, I almost don't want to take days off. I was trading on the plane this morning, leaving from Miami, shorting uh, the spike <laughs> of T, what, which, what was it? DFFN. Uh, DFFN. I tried to dip by. And this is, this is an important lesson. So Mark, you know, is much more cynical than me. And, you know, he, he really likes short selling a lot. And I used to like short selling a lot, but I've kind of adapted because, A, it's scary right now. Uh, B, you know, as a teacher, I see what you guys like and what you don't like. And even when I have, like, the perfect short sell, almost nobody understands it. Almost nobody gets it. So I want to be the best teacher. And, frankly, I think when you guys have small accounts, not necessarily, you know, 700000 or 500000 or a million – but when you have small accounts, you really shouldn't be short selling like with a $3,000 account because there's just not good risk reward. And you can very easily lose a $3,000 account, especially in this market, you know, shorting some of these absolute junk companies, but you short them too soon. And so I think the risk reward right now, especially for people with small accounts on plays like DFFN, you know, where you can lock in 20, 30, 40% upside within an hour on the long side. Do you agree with that? Oh, no doubt about it. I've said this many times. I did a video a couple more, uh, mornings ago, and I said that HTGM, you know, if you, if you really study uh, the big spikers, the low float opportunities are absolutely incredible in this market, and, and uh, HTGM certainly doesn't come around often, but when it's basing and holding green in the, in the I believe it was the the uh, high twos and low threes. You know, you're buying that breakout, and that thing just shoots up a dollar a share, up, you know, almost fifty percent in less than thirty minutes. So, if you recognize these patterns for low floaters, especially on day one, DFFN day one, no problem buying it. You know, it, day two, it it, it uh, you know fizzled out, but. If you're focusing on day one, low float runners that have the ability to spike, especially in this market, you can grow your, your accounts incredibly quickly. And, and that's not with even going playing it aggressively. So JP Bruckner says uh, he misses a lot of opportunities right in front of his eyes because he's not so sure about the play, um, even though he's happy because he recognizes the opportunities. And my answer to you guys on that, I get that a lot, is it's tough to, you know, first of all, trade perfectly, like catch the exact bottom or to short the exact top. But you have to witness a lot of this stuff. You have to see in real time, you know, how these stocks spike, how these stocks drop. And that's part of your education. And it's very good that a lot of you guys are beginning to recognize the signs. You know, I only spotted the morning panic the other day on EMMD because a dozen people in the chat room was like, here's EMMD again. But, you know, I knew to buy when it couldn't really break $3 a share while many people who spotted it were waiting for a bigger crash. So 
it's a, a multi-step process. You have to recognize the patterns, you have to learn to execute them, and you have to learn that you know, you're not going to time them perfectly. You know, I made $2,000 on an EMMD. A lot of other people missed the trade. A lot of other people made more percentage-wise, not necessarily position size-wise. So you have to understand that this takes time. And I know that it's tough, but I have to keep repeating this because a lot of you guys just don't get it. Here's a good question from Team LeBron. Um, <laughs> what, what did you do the first three months when you were just starting, Mark? Well, before I answer that, uh, Team LeBron, uh, I'm sorry about that devastating Don't loss. Don't say anything about LeBron. <laughs> no, LeBron, LeBron's a phenomenal player, um, but I don't think the Cavs have it this year. But anyways, um, what did I do the first one to three months when I started? I mean, I was studying everything I could possibly get my hands on that Tim was doing. He was doing videos. Um, you know, I was super ex like when I first started, I believe the penny stock and silver, which which included the video lessons, had just started. And that really, you know, was very exciting to me because uh, now I had these additional videos that correlated to all the DVDs and, you know, was able to really apply that uh, material um, with the, the plays that were currently going on. And, of course, now we've, there's, you know, endless amounts of videos and, um, you know, I even did a, a top 60 video uh, list for you guys. And, uh, you know, there's so many good places to start. Uh, there is a lot of information. I understand a lot of you guys are overloaded with, with information. But, uh, but studying the basics uh, is really what it comes down to. And then uh, you kind of get a good feel for what, you, what you're good at, what you're comfortable with. <coughs> And also, I should mention, you know, Mark started when I was first starting doing the video lessons, but a lot of you guys are starting with the challenge now, and the challenge has improved dramatically in the past, you know, six to nine months since Mark started doing, you know, video lessons for you guys. Uh, Duck started, you know, alerting in real time. You know, this guy is making like 50, sometimes $100,000 in a day, and yes, I'll post the interview that I did with him soon, so get ready. We just have to translate it because he doesn't speak perfect English. English is not his second language or third language. English is his fourth language, which is so crazy. Um, but Ducks is a great resource in the challenge chat room. Please leave him alone to trade. Don't ask him so many questions. Mark is a great resource. Tim Grittani is a great resource. Please leave him alone. Let him trade. And Michael Good is a great resource, and I'm trying to answer questions too. So, you know, you guys have a lot more um, – I guess, resources than any time in the past. And so now you really have no excuse not to succeed unless you don't take advantage of it. You know, I know a lot of you guys where, you know, I can see how much of the video lessons and DVDs you're watching. And even if you claim to be watching it, like when you say this in emails, you're like, well, I'm watching the, the DVDs. You're watching one eighth of the DVDs. Okay. I'm sorry. I can't, you know, put all this information into like a little USB port and stick it in your head. This isn't the matrix. You have to put in the time and effort. And I know you don't want to, but if you don't want to, if you don't do it, trust me, the market will teach you and that will be a more expensive, more painful way of learning. So it's totally up to you. Anyways, let's get to some more questions. Um, you both should do more live trading videos. Those are the best. I mean, we do live trading uh, webinars, but also understand that trying to narrate while we're trading, it's not an easy task. And especially when I'm going to a lot of these third world countries where the Wi-Fi is, is barely working, it's simply impossible. But, you know, we do like doing that. At the same time, you know, we have to teach kind of, based on the past and live videos, live trading, that's always helpful, but it's not about live all the time. You guys have to learn that your priority should lay in the past. And this is so difficult for so many people. They're like, I don't care about the past. I want to know what hot stocks are now. The secret to your success is hidden in the past. That's what I think. What do you think, Mark? Yeah, I think you, you tend to see these patterns uh, come you know, repeat themselves over and over and over and over again. And, and when you when you look in the past and see uh, 
how some how these supernovas have played out, how these low floats have played out. Uh, you know, simply looking at the historical chart. Too many of you guys don't even look at the 100-day, 200-day, one-year, two-year, three-year chart. You have to use multiple time frames. It's not just about intraday. You should be looking at, I would say, a minimum of four, probably more like six or seven different time frames from intraday, one week, one month, two month, three months, six months, one year, two years. That's what I do before I risk any trade. Do you agree with yeah, that? Yeah, and I think that's the the rookie mistakes that you know I, I know I've made them in the past where I, I don't look back at the chart and say you know what this stock has run in the past. However, day two it's a it's typically a failure, and and if you're going to go long, I'm not knowing you know the past on that, or perhaps you didn't check the the catalyst, or you didn't check. Um, you know, th that goes back to, to just doing some basic homework, but uh, you've got to go back and, and, and look at the basic uh, charts and, and these historical patterns will show up again and again and again. I think Giggle, Giggle is breaking out again today. Giggle is breaking out, and I was dip buying it the other day, and, you know, looks like I should have held. So a lot of you guys are asking me questions on which stocks do I dip buy, and, you know, like a lot of these biotechs, you see one big day is spiking and then, you know, nothing. You have to recognize that a lot of these are kind of like one and done type stocks. Uh, you know, I greatly prefer dip buying stocks like EMMD where they've been running for several weeks or several months. And you have to think about this stuff logically. If something's been running for weeks or months, you know, there are going to be some people on the sidelines who missed out. And they're going to feel guilty. And when they have that crash upon them, they'll try to get in because they'll be like, now here is my chance. But with a lot of these biotech stocks that only spike for one day, they're not necessarily going to bounce that much. Like, yeah, you know, you can try to go for the dip buy on day two. Maybe sometimes like a, a biotech will be choppy in the morning and then actually have a delayed morning spike. But the best dip buys for me are on stocks that have been running for several days, several weeks, VRAY. Uh, you know, was running for for several weeks, and that's why I dip bought it the other day, and I made you know nearly fifty cents a share, sold too soon. And EMMD was running for several weeks too, so I think that's a good lesson uh, that a lot of you guys need. Apparently, I'm not smiling, so I'll, I'll try and smile, Susie. <laughs> Mark is not smiling because I think he's worried about his Spurs tonight. No, I'm not, I'm not that. Worried. Oh, um, here's a question. Uh, no, that question doesn't make sense. Um, <laughs> sorry, We're, we have to ask the, the right questions. Um, ah, this is a good question. How do you avoid burnout when you study a lot but still don't get results? Great question. I think... I think what I'm finding with a lot of students, they're not really identifying their mistakes. And you, you feel like you're burning out, but you're actually not really digging deep enough to figure out what you're doing wrong. Uh, and, you know, those results, are, are, those results can certainly take time uh, as a new trader, uh, regardless. But, um, but documenting everything and really, really goes a long way and, and all of you guys that even if you're paper trading uh, whether it's paper trading or you know putting your, your hard-earned money into the market you've got to figure out what you're doing uh, wrong what you're doing right and what I'm finding is that a lot of you guys uh, based on the watch list that I'm reviewing are not focusing on the right setups uh, and, and and they're not even uh, setups that that are remotely <laughs> close to what you should be looking for. So uh, that means you're not studying enough. Or, and, and it's not rocket science, as you'll hear Tim say. I mean, you've got to look for volatility, stocks that can spike 50 cents or a dollar a share in a, few, in a day or two. Not in five days or 10 days, but in a day or two. So uh, you're going to be frustrated uh, if you're not focusing on uh, the right setups, the volatile plays. And we've had just... Countless, countless ones, DFFN, uh, HTGM, CBIO, uh, P 
P-U-L-M, uh, the list goes on and on, V-R-A-Y, uh, C-G-I-X. I'm, I'm starting to learn my tickers a little better than I used to, actually. So, you know, I, I think that there are students at both ends of the spectrum where some students don't study enough. Some students study a lot and, and they do burn out. I don't want you to burn out. I have to, you know, kind of remind you and, and to give you the proper perspective because it's very easy to, you know, just have one vision of how this is going to be. And when that vision doesn't, you know, play out in reality, you get disappointed. So let me be the first to tell you and remind you that you're not going to make a million dollars all at once. You can't cheat your way to success. All of the studying, all the frustration, all the dedication, all the sacrifice, it does work, but it takes time. And you need to have the proper perspective because if you expect immediate success, like, oh, I'll study all weekend and then I'll just get it all and I'll know everything, you know, on that Monday, you will inevitably be disappointed. So understand that this is a marathon and not a sprint. That said, even if you, let's say, study and you miss a play, or let's say you study and you know there's unexpected news. It's all part of your experience. It all adds to you know kind of like this memory file that you should have. Like okay, here's one play, here's another play. It helps, frankly. I'm not that great at math, but it helps that I have you know somewhat of a photographic memory, so I can remember pattern after pattern, similar play after similar play. A lot of you guys don't have photographic memories, so you have to study. You should have an entire catalog of different patterns and memories that worked out well, that didn't work out well, that you witnessed, that you traded well, that you didn't trade well, and it all adds to your education. You need trades that don't go well, okay? That's part of your resume. You need trades that do go well. You cannot skip a part here. You can't just have all trades that do well. Your education will not be complete. So while you get discouraged from studying when you lose, you shouldn't because the losses are part of the journey and the losses are actually better educators than your gains. I know that many of you guys, if you make $100 in a day, you get really encouraged and you say, hey, I love this. I made $100. I want to study more versus if you lose $100, you're like, I hate this game. I don't want to study ever again. That is, you know, that the mindset of a child, okay? Whether you make or lose $100, it doesn't matter. If you become one of my mastery students and you come learn in Miami, I've given out $100 bills to people. And I say, it doesn't fucking matter whether you make or lose $100 on the day. It's all part of your education. And you're trying to plan for something that is going to actually matter and be life-changing years later. Mark is now making $8,000 in a day. When he first started, he was not making $8,000 in a day. You know, no different than Tim Grittani. Uh, Michael Good, Ducks, myself. You have to scale your positions up once you get comfortable. And in the beginning, you should not take big positions because you're not comfortable and you don't have experience and you don't have you know a, a good basis of how fast some of these stocks move. And if you trade with a big account from the get-go, you will probably get crushed. And then you know either you or your significant other or your family will make you stop trading and learning because. They'll be like, you just lost, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars in a few minutes, and you don't even know why. So I highly suggest that you start small. I highly suggest that you get frustrated small. I highly suggest that you paper trade using stocks to trade, even though it's not a complete education. It does at least teach you about the volatility. So you need to have the proper mindset, and I find that probably fifty to sixty percent of students have the wrong mindset, and that is the cause of ninety percent plus of your problems. Do you agree with that? Yeah, you've got to you've got to have that that mentality that every every trade, every experience that you go through is like he said, a, a, a something to, to store away and, and and you know learn from over time. You're not going to uh, you know pick this up right away, but but if you do it long enough and you you know. Jay Bruker's, Bruckner says aim small, miss small. Yeah, I mean, you, you're... Sniper. And, that, and I think that's really what I learned uh, from Tim, you know, more than anything, is learning to be a sniper and, and staying patient, not having to be in a trade all the time. I can't tell you how many times I've always, <laughs> you know, been at my desk for the whole damn day 
waiting for a stock to break down when I should not be in it. So if you... I am in what? <laughs> Sorry, I had something in my throat. Uh, you know, yeah, I still, I, I, perhaps today was, you know, I'm in IMMY. Uh, I was in it in the morning in the 440s and, and took it off before my plane took off. But uh, I did get back in, and the price action to me suggests that the stock uh, is, you know, ready to, to reverse, and, it, and momentum looks like it's reversing. But back to the point. It couldn't go red. <laughs> You're being stubborn. <laughs> V Ray never went green. <laughs> I'm wrong too. We're two stubborn so, Jews. So here you have two Jews who, you know, have adapted over the years. And while the price action might not go exactly the way we want it, we've learned from the past that uh, typically when a stock behaves a certain way, we have the experience to be able to, uh, you know, be, predict or not predict, but. Uh, you know, be there for that move. Uh, and if we don't get it, we're, we're out for a small loss. Uh, so, uh, but back to being a sniper, not being, uh, you know, obsessed with trading all day long. I think that's the biggest um, downfall to a lot of traders because, oh, what happened? Here? Oh, it just went on. So a lot of traders just constantly want to be, have action. And all of you have probably heard that at 80, what is it, 80% of my, uh, wins come from 6% of my plays. I think that that number has actually changed quite a bit because I've adjusted uh, the way I trade over the past uh, couple of years. And and, uh, and that's what you have to do. You have to adapt and adjust and fine-tune your game. And I, I compare this to, to sports. You've got to uh, limit your turnovers uh, or your unforced errors if it's tennis. Uh, you've got to make adjustments if you're constantly making the same mistakes, which I see quite a bit uh, of, you know, where students are just, uh, you know, making that same mistake where they're buying near the highs of the day uh, after a stock's already up three green days in a row. So if you're buying a stock after it's already up three, four, five days in a row, and you keep doing that over and over, then you're not identifying the root of, of, you know, your mistakes. So uh, you've got to really tune in to what, uh, what you need to improve on. Good question from Oscar. He says, hi, Mark. When did you decide to quit your job and just trade for a living? I'm sure a lot of people, you know, want to know the answer to this. Yeah, so good question. So I was... Uh, doing some trading, uh, not a whole lot, while I was uh, still in the cubicle, and I decided roughly, uh, I believe it was three to, uh, gosh, it was maybe five months after I had started that, uh, you know, I was, I was canning the job and, gonna, and, and, and transitioning to trading full-time. Now, remember, I... I had a safety net. I didn't wasn't just doing it on a whim and 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 needing to make you know ten thousand a month. Uh, I had uh, the wherewithal. So uh, the key is if you're if you're working, use those extra hours at night to study and and you know tune into the market as much as you can. But don't be don't be in a hurry to to quit your job necessarily. I mean. This is, as Tim said earlier, this is something that you're learning. This is a life skill. And even if you did this part-time, uh, to some extent anyways, uh, it's, it's well worth it. The, uh, the long-term uh, benefits just from understanding how this all works is, um, you know, goes a long way. So uh, Genius looks like he quit his job two weeks ago. Ay, ay, ay. Calm down with cutting, you know, your, your jobs down because a lot of you guys, you know, just think that you're going to be so successful from the start. You have like one $5,000 profit and you're like, I got this. I got this. And I see too many of you just thinking that, you know, one success or two successes means that you're always going to be successful. This is something that is so tough 
to do, even, you know, me two decades into this journey, I still have moments where I just ignore my rules or I take crappy trades or I go too big. It's not an exact science. And before you get rid of a, a solid paying job, even if you hate it, at least it's, you know, something where the paycheck is coming in regularly. You can't live off this money, okay? This is speculative money. Like, you have to be prepared to not care if you lose your entire account. And I know that sounds harsh because rule number one is to cut losses quickly, but you can't be, you know, trying to pay your monthly rent with trading gains. Like, you can't be like, oh, rent is due at the end of this week, so I better have a good week trading. That would be terrible, okay? Because you will end up forcing trades and taking bad trades in order to make the money to pay the rent. And, you know, what happens if, if there are no good trades? What if you take a bad trade and you lose money? Now you're getting further away from being able to pay your rent. So you have to be very careful with the money that you have in your account. There's a reason why, you know, I didn't have a Lamborghini for the first decade of my trading. I didn't want to take any money out of the account other than, you know, to pay taxes because I didn't want to trade with a smaller account because I was making money pretty much every single year trading. If you take money out of your account to live or you know splurge, then you have to take smaller position sizes and that will affect your future earnings. So you have to think about all of this stuff before you get rid of a job, before you start you know, trying to live off this as, as income. Um, good question from uh, Debbie Downer. Do you guys ever feel like you're gambling rather than investing? I'll take this first. Um, this is gambling. This is researched gambling, except that if you go to a casino and gamble, even if you like count cards, your odds are never more than, you know, 55% at best, okay? And most of the time, if you're in a casino, you're winning 40 to 45% of the time. And that 5 to 10% of the, the 50% is what the casino takes every single time. And that's why casinos are a multi-billion dollar business. The thing with this is that if you wait for the proper setups, if you have the right variables um, and you do your research ahead of time with all the variables, not just like, oh, I see news, I see an earnings win. You look at the float, you look at the market, you look at your position size, you look at your own personal schedule, you look at the past performance of the stock, you look at what time of day it is, you look at the volume, you look at everything and you come up with a good plan, you can win 65, 70, 75% of the time. And that is still gambling, but it's research gambling and the odds are on your side. Investing, you know, I, I know how like newbies think like this is investing. We're not investing in penny stocks. Almost every single penny stock will end up at zero. Almost every single penny stock will go bankrupt. Almost every single penny stock will fail. So you're not investing in these companies. And I think that's the main problem that most people look at penny stocks like, oh, I'm only going to put in $1,000. Maybe it's the next Microsoft. And, you know, every now and then one out of like 200 penny stocks makes it and it sends you the total wrong lesson. And I know some people that just have, quote, investments in like 30 different penny stocks. And they're like, well, I have 30 different positions, 1000 bucks each. One of them will pay off and, you know, cover all the losses of the other ones. That is not what we do at all. Take it yeah, away. I'm not sure I can say it any better. I mean, this is certainly, if you want to call it short, you know, short-term investments uh, that are extremely, um, you know, you're you're dealing with extreme volatility. So, uh, you know, it's all semantics. But bottom line is, you're uh, you are gambling, but the key is the edge and that is why you're here you're here to get gain that edge and that's what you will gain over time uh, as you uh, master these patterns and, and watch a number of these patterns play out over and over and over again HTGM is not the first for those of you that are brand new to this uh, CBIO came the next day so you'll see you know plenty of these type of, of moves uh, you know, over and over and over again, and uh, you can certainly uh, get the odds on your side. Uh, and it is gambling to an extent, but the odds will be on your side if you are uh, really playing the pattern. Um, you know the way the way Tim teaches it, and and these patterns are very very uh, repetitive.
A good question I saw was, I'll, I'll get in the shot after this. I'm going to pull this chair around. But right now, Mark is, is hogging the limelight. Yeah, why don't just, we put this No, Mark in. loves attention. It's fine. Okay. Um, I'm going to pull it around after I answer this question. I saw one question. How do you get in the zone and what is your morning routine? Um, I think the two are related because my morning routine, no matter, well, depending on where I am, depending on what time zone, but the morning for the U.S. stock market, because I'm always trading the U.S. stock market. So before the market open, I'm always, always, always looking at the stocks on my watch list from the previous night, and I'm looking at pre-market big percent winners. I'm trying to see what stocks are in play, what stocks fit my pattern, and I get quote, in the zone when there's a play that fits my patterns to a T. Last week, you might have seen I was kind of sloppy trading. I was over trading. I was down a little heading into Friday. I didn't have a good morning and I was kind of pissed and I was like, well, I'm going to study, you know, my penny stocking part two and how to make millions DVDs over the weekend and I'll get more disciplined. And then I got in the zone real quick when EMMD panicked perfectly from four to two and I recognize it as one of my best, most reliable patterns. And I took it and it wiped away all my small losses and I felt amazing going into the weekend. So you have to wait for the right patterns. And if you don't know what the right patterns are, you have to study these DVDs and watch lists and webinars and video lessons so that you understand the various patterns. And yes, I saw a question before. Some of you guys are like, should we be keeping track of different patterns? I think that's a great idea. Um, it's on one of our many programming uh, to-do lists for Profitly where you can basically track the performance of different patterns and different strategies because as you'll see from my interviews with Ducks and Tim Grittani when I post them shortly uh, in the next few days, you know, they haven't had success just on one pattern. They each have multiple patterns and sometimes a pattern works better than others and sometimes a pattern just stops working. So when I made like six grand on EMMD, that pattern panic on, you know, an intraday basis on a, a multi-week run-up, especially kind of like a pump looking chart, that is probably my single most reliable buying pattern over the past 20 years. So all I had to do was see it and I got very excited and I only got executed on a small portion of my shares. Um, I didn't have the, the best mindset going in but when you have a, a great setup like that, nothing else really matters. So your dilemma and your you know goal should just be to understand what is a great pattern and how can you wait for that and how can you be prepared because there are great patterns. EMMD did it again this week and I just made $2,000 selling again too soon. So these patterns happen again and again and when they really are perfect, I get in the zone because I've, I've studied so much and I have so much experience that it's very easy for me to recognize it. A lot of you guys might see a perfect setup but you don't recognize it and that is the fault of you. That is your, your lack of preparation, and we need to fix that. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, that was a lot you just said. <laughs> um, I think uh, too many of, of you guys are, are, are just not... Um, you know, limiting, prioritizing which plays are, are, are the best to focus on. And if you can focus the two or three best plays every morning as part of your everyday routine, then that's going to uh, keep all the noise and the distraction uh, away from you. And I think that's, that's a lot of this noise and, you know, trying to focus on way too many tickers is is distracting your concentration and your focus. So uh, so I'll leave it at that. I'm out of the bed. We have a, a bed here. I, I work literally from bed most days. I don't know why I love it so much. You know, sometimes I doze off and I'm taking a nap. Like, I, I just love it. And you have to speak up a little bit because now we move the, the computer back a little bit. But um, yeah, you know, I, I work from bed. I, I really do. I can't help it. I know that I should have an office. I know I should have like multi-screen monitors, but I think I, I like working from bed just as a giant fuck you to the whole office world where no one could work from bed ever. Have, did you ever work from bed when you were working as an accountant? Not even close. No. So I enjoy my bed. <laughs> I do need more exercise though.
Uh, let's see. Good question from Saad. How do you guys handle fear? Mark, you want to take that? Yeah, I mean, fear is, is a part of this game. And the only way to, to manage your fear is to manage your position size. If you take position size and you're not comfortable in the trade and you're clearly scared of losing too much money, that means you're taking too much size. And, you know, I was doing that a couple of weeks ago. I was buying like 14,000 shares of AUPH thinking it was going to bounce and suddenly I'm, I'm down four grand, five grand. What it, I can't remember exactly what it was, but uh, and then I bought it when the first green day came and I, I had... I think 7,000 shares, and I nailed it. And I was comfortable with the size, and you've, everybody uh, struggles with that at some point. Um, and, and from week to week, you've got to just regain your, your, your cal recalibrate, so to speak, and make sure that you're uh, taking a reasonable size position relative to your account size. And it's okay to go all in if you're trading a couple thousand Bucks. Don't ever say that. Just a couple thousand dollars. I mean, if you're trading two thousand dollars. Don't ever go all in. You know, if you're trading a tiny account. Never go all in. If, if He's you, drunk. He's been <laughs> drinking Manischewitz all day. You know, you're, it's okay to, to take, let's say, 50% of your account if you're trading a small account size. Now, I would never, I would never advise, you know, going all in on a, on a, you know, as you grow your account, a bigger account. But the, How about never go all in at all? These people don't know the rules, okay? okay. But, well, Don't go all in. Never go all in. <laughs> None of you guys are good enough. Even Ducks, who's now making all this money, he should never go all in. Because you don't know what could happen. And I don't want you guys blowing up. So this is my little warning to you. As for fear, I think you should overcome it. I was, used to be afraid of heights. I went skydiving twice. I got sinus infections twice. But I'm not afraid of heights anymore. I'm just afraid of sinus infections. So I transferred my fear to something different. You guys don't have to be afraid of trading. This is why stocks to trade and paper trading is so good. Um, you know, you can practice. Obviously, you don't get the full education. You don't get the emotional um, kind of experience. Uh, but at least, you know, you do learn how to deal with the volatility and you see how fast these stocks move. A lot of you guys aren't prepared for how fast this stuff moves, you know, no different than this chat room. So 50% of your account, again, if it's like a perfect, perfect play, I don't mind that. But like I'm long VRAY overnight. I wouldn't go big on that. That was like a speculative play that I thought that it could go green. Now that it couldn't go green, you know, I'm down like 10 cents. Should I cut losses? Probably, but it might spike so fast tomorrow and I'm still comfortable with it because I have a small, puny, tiny position size. It's very different when you know, you're taking a, a big position size on a speculative stock. So you have to understand what kind of pattern it is and you know, how to adapt. Yeah, I think that yeah, I, think I have to go to the bathroom. I have to pee real quick. Hold on for it. You take it. So I think that's, that's you know, very relevant what Tim was just saying because uh, you certainly will be fearful when you uh, first start. I mean, losing money is not is, is never fun, but uh, but understanding and Ducks just really uh, laid it out here in the chat. He said uh, count uh, below three thousand dollars. I mean, you can put a good percentage, uh, not necessarily all in, but you can certainly put a good percentage of your account when the pattern is right. In HTGM, the pattern was right. HTGM, let's, you know, let's let's review it again. I, I did a video lesson on it a couple of days ago and I said, uh, I've been pounding the table uh, just in terms of where this market uh, has, has really rewarded longs and that has been in the biotech sector and in small caps, especially low floats, and HTGM uh, had run, did run that one day uh, going back into February, and uh, a lot of people thought that it was a one and done; it would never come back. Lo and behold, it put out they put out some news of a patent, and 
It started spiking in after hours and it refused to break down in the 290s, which is where the resistance, initial resistance was going back to February, if you pull up a chart. Uh, but the point is, is HTGM was a play, uh, if you've seen enough of these patterns and understand the, the, uh, the explosive potential of low floats, that, uh, that it, it was a play where you could certainly put, you know, if you're, if you're trading a $3,000, you buy, you know, seven, 800 shares at three bucks and, uh, or 310 when it starts to break out the highs of the day. And again, go back and just review the video lesson I did, but, uh, but identifying the good ideal setups, uh, will allow you to really determine what is uh, worth getting more aggressive on and what is certainly more speculative in the case of IMMY, which I'm short, just a small 7,000 share position. For my account, very small. For Tim, he's long VRAY, very small position. Uh, but these are two speculative plays where we did not go aggressive because they're not necessarily um, ideal chart patterns. So that's going to be key for you is to really figure out where to get aggressive, when to get aggressive, when to play uh, a speculative play far more conservatively. And, and that's, not, that's not straightforward. That's a skill I think you learn over time. And, um, and just by watching Tim uh, trade after trade after trade after trade after trade, watching his, you know, the Tim Alerts uh, that he did for the first few years uh, trading, I think as, you know, a lot of people uh, kind of, you know, they think these alerts are, are, uh, are perhaps, you know, too frequent or too, um, you know, not necessarily educational, but that's, Far from the that that's actually couldn't be further from the truth. You're actually learning from these uh, alerts uh, by the position sizes. Uh, Tim bought DFFN yesterday, one thousand shares at three fifty five. How confident was he in that play? Not terribly confident if he took a thousand shares, but he did. He did put in his entire small account. Half of it. Uh, oh, how much is your small account? Eight thousand now. Okay, so he put in. Not barely half of the uh, account, and so that is where you can learn. Um, I think, especially from Tim's position sizes as well. And also, I should mention, you know, I've got two accounts. I'm still working on sizing up because, you know, pretty much the past two years I've been trading with a small account. Now I have a million dollar account that I'm trading with. Um, I'm still not comfortable with taking a hundred, two hundred thousand dollar positions, even though I should be, because I did this a few years ago, but. It's weird to go back and forth, you know, it's it's like playing in, you know, the NBA and then playing against, you know, mini me and it's like you're still playing basketball but it's like a different game. So, when I trade with a small account, oftentimes I trade, you know, very speculative setups where if I'm wrong like on DFFN, if it did not break out yesterday uh, in the fours, guess what? I, I would have gotten out. You know, the the day high was 480, I was in at 460. I anticipated it, if you watch today's video lesson, I anticipated it retesting the 480 level, but it easily could have double topped. And then I would have gotten out for a 10 or 20 cent a share profit, or if it had double topped and come down, I would have lost 10 or 20 cents. But either way, my risk reward was, was very small, aim small, miss small. And then it actually did break 480 as I thought it would, and I was planning on holding it overnight, and it hit you know the 520s, 530s after hours. I'm gonna sell because now it's hit all my goals and there's no reason to hold anymore. This is also another reason a lot of you guys under the PDT rule, you're trading and you get stuck. I see like with your last day trade of the week, you're like, oh, I, I bought this stock and I can't get out because it's my only day trade. You should have planned ahead of time, okay? Always leave yourself the option to get out same day. I don't ever want to see you guys being like stuck in a play because even if it double tops or even if it doesn't do exactly what you want, you have to stay in it just so that it doesn't count as a day trade. Poor planning on your part. 
okay? If you really want to have more day trades, which I don't think you even need with a small account, but if you do, you can have two different accounts. Open up an account at Scott Trade, open up an account at E-Trade, put $2,000 in each. Now you have six day trades per week. You really don't need to trade that much. DFFN was, I think, my first play in March, or like my second play with my small account. Um, that's it. In, in my small account, I started the year with 5,000. It's up to nearly 9,000 after three months and nothing huge at all. But when you can make a few hundred dollars on a trade like DFFN, I like being able to show that. So you don't need to avoid the PDT rule. You don't need to trade that much. How do you avoid the PDT rule? You don't fucking trade that much. You hold a play overnight. You don't take as many trades. You pra practice paper trading. Some of you guys think that you have to like make $20 here and $10 here and $5 here and then it adds up to millions over time. That's not the right way, okay? You might make $20, but that should never have been your goal, okay? DFFN, I'm making nearly $1,000 on a $4,000 position. Those are the kinds of plays that you should be trading when you have a small account. Uh, let's see. How do you control your greed when you get out in the stock too soon and if you held longer, you could have made more? Okay, I get this question a lot where a lot of the time I exit too soon on EMMD. I just had my best trade of the year, of the past year. I had my best short-term trade and I took one-third of the profits. I made roughly 6000 I could have made 18000 had I held like another hour or so. How do I deal with it? I don't fucking care, okay? I made my money. I went in with a plan. I stuck to the plan. It was a good trade. Even if I had a loss, I stuck to the plan and I cut my losses if the play doesn't work out. Guess what? That is how you solidly trade. You stick to your plan. You create a plan and you stick to it. If you change the plan, if you don't stick to it, it's a very slippery slope. And sometimes, yes, you will capture more of the profits. You know, oftentimes I get out of stocks too early and I could have big profits. But when that happens, I simply adjust my plan for the next time. I don't throw out the plan altogether. It's not either or. This isn't Vegas where you have to double your money or put it all on black or red. There's many different adjustments you can make. If I sell too soon one time, I'm going to try and hold it a little longer the next time. If I cut losses quickly and I was right to cut losses quickly, I'm going to cut losses quickly the next time because I can see how the stock does after I get out. And I use that knowledge and I adapt and I adapt and I refine and I refine and I optimize. But I see a lot of you guys sticking to your plan and you get out, maybe for losses, and then the stock does what you want and you're like, ah, oh, I should never have gotten out. And you start questioning your plan and you stop cutting losses quickly. That is wrong. There's a right way to make money and there's a wrong way to make money. If you ignore your plans, if you ignore strategy and you make money, that is the wrong way. Again, I know that you're encouraged when you make money because you don't want to pay attention. Many of you guys don't care if you make money the wrong way. You just want to make money. I'm trying to change your life, but you need to pay attention. If you develop bad habits in the beginning, it will catch up to you in the end and that will be your end. Okay, Tim Grittani was very successful in the beginning, but he also developed quite a few bad habits and that hurt him for nearly a year as you'll hear when we post his, uh, you know, we did like an hour long interview. So I don't want you developing bad habits. You cannot judge your success solely based on your profits and losses in the beginning. Judge your success as a student based on your habits and your discipline and how disciplined you are. Again, the money that you make or lose in the beginning won't change your life in the end. But the habits you learn and develop will. That's my answer. What's your answer? Yeah, I think, you know, that's, that's how we teach the, our children, right? And that's what I'm going to try and teach. And you guys are my children. I don't have any babies. I have a baby now. So what I teach her now, you know, going forward, really, you know, will speak volumes later on. Duxy says, Duxy, you're a teenager. No, you're not. Anyways, um, you've got to really develop the good habits and that's, uh, there's gonna be frustrations. I guarantee you there'll be frustrations where you're out of a play and, and then you're like, oh, I was right. But 
Uh, if you have the right discipline, uh, over time you will definitely um, succeed in the long run. So, uh, and that's why I'm having you know as much success uh, as I'm over the past year and year and a half. I mean, I've been doing this for so long already, and I'm not ashamed that that I you know I'm taking you know several years to really um, master this. And perhaps, you know, it's, it's for me, it's taken longer, but uh, the key is the refining. And, and over time, if you refine, 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 that's going to bring you to the next level. So, uh, I think we got to go, man. It's getting late. One more question. One more question. Um, the question was, where was it? Oh, this one guy says, how many times have you guys said the same shit? We say the same shit because, frankly, he learned the rules and I teach the rules and these rules work. So it's not totally random. When you hear ducks in my interview, it's like I'm interviewing myself. In fact, I actually said, ducks, I think that you're a Chinese clone from the future of myself because, you know, the UN has banned cloning. I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm actually looking into this because I need more, you know, helpers. The UN has banned cloning, but... There are rumors that China is working on clones. So I think that in the future, I go to China, create a clone. That clone is ducks. I send ducks back into the past to help me teach you guys so that my future clone can thus help my business grow by teaching the exact same stuff, but from a different mindset. I don't know. Just an idea. I have no proof of this. This is just my... Uh, my imagination talking, but I really do believe that Ducks is my Chinese clone. Just throwing that out there in case I am right, it wouldn't surprise me. If like in five years, you know, and he comes out and he's like, you know what, Tim, you're right. Like time travel and cloning is possible in 2087. I am your Chinese clone. I will be like, I knew it. March 29, 2017, I gave a webinar. I was right. Um, Exactly, like Terminator, but the Timinator. Yes, it, it makes sense. Um, I'll be back, but in a Chinese accent, which I cannot do. Um, IBZ says, how do I start knowing the patterns? What DVDs do I watch? As a challenge student, you guys get a syllabus of what DVDs and what order to watch them. Mark created this syllabus. Mark has also created a quiz, which I have to review. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. I haven't had time for that yet. But... You guys just have to email admin at timothysykes.com for all the information that you need. We'll give you guidance, okay? I've hired a lot of people to help you. And frankly, that's how you learn. So pay attention to the syllabus. We have to go celebrate Mark's early birthday. Um, take a look at uh, the TV tonight, Spurs versus Warriors. ESPN. Is it on ESPN? 9.30 Eastern. ESPN, 9.30 p.m. Eastern. We will be there with the Admiral David Robinson. Uh, check my Snapchat and, and Instagram. I'll post some photos and videos there too. But happy early birthday again to Mark. Thank you for coming to uh, this this Thanks little Q&A yeah. webinar. And, uh, you know, you guys just keep it up. Like, you know, you, you just need patience. That's all this game is about. You, you're already on the right track just wanting to learn. That's a big step that most people don't take. Um, but you have to have the patience to see it through. You know, if you say like, look, I want to be a student. I want to be a millionaire. I want to actually do something with my life and live the life that I dreamed of. You're going to have to follow through because everybody wants the dream life. But most people aren't willing to do the hard work and sacrifice that's required to get there. What are you laughing at? It's a funny clock. We do have a funny clock. Uh, anyways, thank you guys again for tuning in. Um, this Friday morning, Tim Grittani, out of the blue, you know, just because this is so, what's so amazing about the challenge. We have so many different successful traders. Tim Grittani, out of the blue, is like, hey, I want to do a live trading webinar. So Friday morning, I believe 9 a.m. Eastern, uh, Tim Grittani will be on and he usually does like two or sometimes even three hour live trading webinars. So don't miss that. He just passed $4 million in profits. He's already up nearly half a million in 2017 in just the first three months. He now lives in the Caribbean and I try and chat with him and he cuts off our chats because he has to go play with the sea turtles every now and then. Literally, did I tell you this? I was talking to him on Gchat and he's like, oh Tim, sorry, I got to go. The, the sea turtles are out. 
And I'm like, that's, yeah, that's, the that's a good problem to have if the sea turtles are out and you have to go play with them. Um, but anyways, thank you guys. What's up? Tim Sykes here. Courtside, Spurs versus Warriors. With Mark Cook. Woo! We haven't been to a game in a while. A few years ago when you passed, I think you were at like 200,000 in profits or something. I think you were at 150,000 in profits. And now you're over 700,000 in profits. And you look the exact same. But your life is not the same. How is life different now? Dude, everything's changed since I got to Miami, man. Ever since I came to Miami. What's happened? What been, is Miami been do? pretty amazing. I got married, man. I have a child now. I'm sitting courtside and life is pretty fucking sweet. Don't swear. Come on, you have a kid. Oh, okay. It's all right. Come We're on, here. Baby. It's cool. Come on. We just had dinner with David Robinson, the man. I'll post that video too. Mark and I are having a great talk with him and he just had some great words of wisdom that I wanted him to pass down to you. What do you got to say, David, to my students? You tell me. Oh, are you recording yeah, now? Yeah, 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 we're recording. Uh, I see. All yeah. right, well, hey, I'm David Robinson and all you Tim students out there, I just wanted to say, uh, keep working hard. Uh, nothing's easy, but uh, your dedication, your focus is gonna take you places you cannot even imagine, right? So you may have a thought, but don't worry about your dreams. You're, you're going to surpass your dreams. Just keep working. And consistency. Never give up, right? No days off. Well, you can take one or two oh days off. Oh, my yeah, God, yeah, David. Yeah, you're I know, killing yeah. me. Well, I no, use I, the hashtag <laughs> no days off. No days off. Okay, go with that. Then. Yes. It's finding the right balance in your life, right? You, you got family. You, want, you don't want to miss out on your kids or your wife. But at the same time, you know, you got to be dedicated to your subject. So um, just stay focused, man, and, and, and try not to get anything out of perspective. Don't burn out. I actually missed my college graduation for a stock trade. So learn from my mistake. <laughs> don't do that. Go to your college graduation. That's funny. I don't <laughs> and have your kids games. I don't have the balance yeah. that yeah. I need to listen to the you YouTube. You got to have balance. That's a not, you know no success is worth anything if you don't have someone to share it with. So make sure that you you don't miss out on the other important things in life. Thank you for sharing everything and congrats on all your success and for Thank remaining you. so yeah. humble. Yeah, all right. Appreciate and that. Just amazing. Thank Thanks, man. We got a little better seats than him. He's so gracious, he wouldn't even allow us to sit in worse seats than him. I don't know what's going on here. But fourth side NBA is pretty freaking sweet. Get here. Get inspired. It ain't cheap. It ain't easy. Getting to 700,000 in profits like this man. Happy birthday tomorrow, by the way. Thank you, man. Mark Cook's birthday. Many of you challenge students. You know, Mark has been mentoring you guys. I don't know what this guy's doing. This is what happens when you just blindly follow a penny stock. You end up like that guy. He hasn't done his research. That's a bag holder. You want to know what a bag holder looks like. But uh, no, in all seriousness, it's just awesome, you know? Ow! It's totally, totally different. Go through my videos, you can see when I sat courtside next to Spike Lee. This guy is the best. The Leonard, the Saul's about to shoot. Here he's right there. Freaking awesome game. 48-45, there's already been a 23-point comeback. Check this out. Oh! Wait till you see the action. They're gonna go to the other side first, but then they're gonna come back in. You're gonna see the action. You gotta sit courtside. I know that the stadium is big. There's a lot of people all over the place. Maybe you're watching it on TV, but courtside, it's just different. Defense. Wait for them to come back. Give me a few seconds. Even now, it's pretty cool. Oh! oh I'm glad they did that, so they can come back here. Yes, Leonard! Yes! Let's go, Kawhi! Look at this. Get inspiration. I didn't plan that. Here's the action I'm talking about. 
Here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh. Very nice. Anyways, leave a comment with the word courtside. If you get inspired by videos like this. And you want to come sit courtside with me at one of these games, all you got to do is be a dedicated student like Mark, who's done so much. Thank you for all your hard work, Mark. Seriously. No, On behalf of all the, all the challenge students, thank you for mentoring. And it's my pleasure to you know hang out with you and see this. But you guys watching, get inspired. Jordan. Oh, Jordan. <laughs> So close. The ball was coming to me. Oh, well, what can you do? Anyways, leave a comment with the word courtside if this inspires you, if you want a better life for yourself, for your loved ones, if you want to start a charity like I have, if you want to be like Leonard, like the freaking best basketball player in the land, whose ass is in my face right now. But seriously, this is just... It's just beautiful. Oh, and Thompson answers it right back. It's beautiful because this is competition and inspiration. And Ginobili, Mark met Ginobili. This is his favorite player. Now he's complaining like a little Ginobili. Why is Ginobili always complaining, Mark? He's usually right. Anyways, get inspired, work hard, live well. I'll post the video of, oh my God. I'll post the video of uh, David uh, Robinson's tips too. He had some good tips. Mark and I just had dinner with him. My name is Tim Sykes and I teach people to trade stocks. I am a self-made multimillionaire. So this is the ideal trade that I'm gonna talk about. I want you guys to understand every single aspect of this trade. 